I first remember getting a comic when I was like eight or nine years old. We were coming back from Japan and uh, going through the Southwest. I'd never seen them because I lived in Japan. And uh, we pulled into this place and got warm Dr. Peppers and uh, comic books. I saw Superboy with this crypt Kryptonian dragon. I just got hooked. I can't remember when I started drawing. I mean, I was, I've been drawing since I was, since, since literally I can remember. I remember doing little stick figure karate kids and stuff like that, or rocket ships. And I remember I was drawing the day Kennedy was shot. I was drawing like rocket ships and something like that when, when the announcement came over. And I think I was like six years old when that happened. When I was a kid looking up to artists, it was, uh, John Buscema was a god. John Buscema was like the most accomplished guy in the business when it came to just he could draw anything, and it would just be lyrical, and it was powerful. Um, Gil Kane was just an amazing anatomist. He could draw the figure like that. He was doing Spider-Man really a lot when I was a kid. Nowadays, there's guys out there who just are amazing. All sorts of different styles appeal to me, so you know, it's a lot of different guys. And Marvel came out with this big tryout book, and it's regular size pages like this here. And... Um, they said, you know, it was a contest, the trial contest. And you did, they had sections of the comic that um, were unfinished, considering if you wanted to be a penciler or an inker or a colorist or whatever. And I wasn't going to do it. It was 20 bucks. And this was 25 years ago. And this is like, it was too much money. I thought it was a gimmick to take money from kids because Marvel was getting some bad press at the time. And the guy at the bookstore I go to, a friend of mine, gave it to me. He said, Look, if you don't do this, you'll hate yourself. And I won first place out of 19,700 and something, you know. Granted, 18,900 of them were 12-year-olds. So, you know, Eric Larson swears he came in second, and I think, I think it's actually true. Um, but it got me a trip to New York, and they all threw me out of their offices, and the last guy I saw on the last day there gave me just a one-shot thing and then another one-shot thing. And for about a year and a half, I lived on four hours of sleep a night, just doing Lockheed and doing comics. And then Lockheed started laying off, and we closed on a house, and I quit the next day. I've been doing comics ever since. I've been pretty important to Marvel for a long time because of my output and the fans really seem to like what I do. Um, my run on Ultimate Spider-Man has broke a 45-year-old record. Stanley and Jack Kirby had the longest run on a mainstream comic book. It was the Fantastic Four. They did one, issue 1 through 104 without a break. No fill-ins, no inventory stories, nothing. And that record has stood for 45 years. And uh, Brian Bendis and I, we just started doing Ultimate Spider-Man, and it's just was a, we we're a great team, and it just it's clicking, it's clicking and clicking, and all of a sudden we realized people are starting to write about, hey, you know, you're coming close to the record, which I'd never heard of the record, you know, nobody ever talked about a record, and all of a sudden it became a thing, and um, I'm pretty proud of it, but I, I really make the point, Jack Kirby was doing four issues a month, he was doing covers, he was designing most of Marvel's characters at the time. I was working on this one book. You know, I was doing a few other things on the side, but not in anything to come close to Jack Kirby's speed and skill. And you know, I'm proud of it because I don't think anybody else is going to do it for a long time. I've signed with DC Comics because they made me an offer that really appealed to me. It involves Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. And it's called Trinity, and it's 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 DC's like their big project for the year, and it, they're promoting the hell out of it. And I've really had a hankering to work on work with Superman for a while now. It appeals to my set of skills because it's something that involves having to do good work and have to do it on schedule and relatively fast for the market now. And I'm one of the few guys in the business who could do that. And DC seems to love what I'm doing, which is nice because you don't know when you're working on an iconic character, you don't know if they're really gonna they're gonna look at it and go, no, wait a minute, this isn't gonna work. You know, I gotta stick him on Martian Manhunter or something. The ones I'm looking forward to being able to draw, the main ones that are in the book. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, now that I'm working at DC. Um, but they've got such great visual characters on the side, like Dr. Fate, and I got to do just a panel of Ragman, who's this character nobody's ever heard of. So it's like, I'm doing Ragman, and they're paying me for it. I still get that sort of feeling sometimes. People ask who my favorite superhero is, and it's got to be, you know, it's always been Spider-Man as, as a character. I mean, I think I learned a lot of my feelings of responsibility towards people, towards, you know, my family. From, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. It's hokey as hell because I use it so much, but if you think about it, it's, it's a pretty good way to live your life, you know, if you're, if you're responsible about things and things tend to turn out well. I've moved on from Ultimate Spider-Man 
not because I was upset with anything with the company or I was tired of drawing the character or I was tired of the book, but I'd done, done it long enough where for a career move it was time to change and do something else. And um, can't think of anything better than to go on to my next favorite character, which is Superman and Batman. So, and Wonder Woman's fun to draw too. Thank you.